Hi, I just want to make a quick tutorial explaining why a Joe cell actually adds fuel economy to your engine and why a conventional hydrogen cell will not add fuel economy to your engine. A Joe cell does not require any modifications to be made to your engine and that in itself is really important and it's because of an important distinction that makes the Joe cell different. If we come over and look at the engine, if you look down there on the side of the exhaust manifold there's actually an oxygen sensor. If you're putting oxygen into the engine, your engine will see that extra oxygen and it doesn't like that. It wants to add more fuel to make the correct fuel mixture, which is 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. And what it's doing is it's always trying to maintain that mixture at all times except for when you're full throttle. So if you add extra oxygen to your engine, what you're going to get is actually a rich condition. Now if you add hydrogen without oxygen, your engine is going to see that there's less oxygen and it's going to decrease the amount of fuel sprayed through your fuel injectors by decreasing the fuel injector pulse width. So it's very simple. This is just ordinary electronic fuel injection science. There's nothing complicated about it. If you put a hydrogen cell on your car, you most likely will not see any gas mileage improvement. If you put a Joe cell on your car, you're only allowing hydrogen into the engine because a Joe cell is not actually vented into your intake manifold. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you really quick. This is the part that throws everybody off, and I know it's hard to believe. But a Joe cell is hooked to your engine with what's called a blind fitting. This fitting does not connect to the air intake stream, the air passing into your engine. This is bolted in close proximity to your intake manifold or directly to your intake manifold. It is electronically connected, so there's a conductive path, but it's not vented anywhere into the airstream of the engine. Now what this does is it limits the particles that go into your engine, and it prevents entire gas molecules like oxygen and hydrogen mixed together from entering your engine. And it also prevents all of the oxygen from entering your engine. No oxygen can actually get out of the cell into your engine. And so by limiting that, you actually trick the computer into scaling back the fuel injector pulse width. The oxygen sensor sees that there's hydrogen, and it doesn't need as much gasoline, so it will scale back. Basic science. But how does the particles, how do these particles get into the engine? That's the question. Well, in a Joe cell, you actually have hydrogen ions, which are called protons. And protons are 100,000 times smaller than hydrogen. But the unique thing is that protons are actually still a form of hydrogen, and they're called hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions occur when you have electrolysis of water. So the water is emitting protons, which are also hydrogen ions, and also they are subatomic particles. Subatomic particles, like electrons, can pass through solid metals, like conductors. And they only pass through conductors very easily, while not really passing through plastic very easily. So what you do is you electrically connect the Joe cell to actually to your intake manifold, but you do not vent the Joe cell to your intake manifold. That is the distinction. If you're using a conventional HHO cell, you're probably vented directly into the air intake stream, and you're probably not going to get any gas mileage improvement. A Joe cell is special in this regard. It has to use a blind fitting. You cannot vent it into the engine. Subatomic particles the size of protons are able to pass directly through this, through this solid fitting that is not vented to your intake, and it's simply bolted to your intake. The particles pass from the aluminum directly into the intake manifold where it saturates your entire engine with hydrogen only, only in the form of protons. And what does that do? Well, on this car, to my amazement, it gets 46 and a half miles per gallon. The car is only rated for 36 miles per gallon. And immediately after putting the Joe cell on and correctly configuring it, it gets 46 and a half miles per gallon really amazing. Um, it almost defies belief, but when you look at the science, it's extremely simple. The orgone theories are not correct. The cell does not power the engine on orgone, although orgone may be part of the Joe cell. It is not what is responsible for increasing your gas mileage on the engine. It's very simple. It's hydrogen in the form of ions called protons. They're able to permeate and saturate the engine block, the pistons, the cylinder head, and then you get an engine that for as long as you keep the cell on has increased fuel economy. The other good thing is a Joe cell requires no 
maintenance whatsoever. Once it's on, you never have to look at it again. It cannot explode because it's not vented to the air intake. It's vented to the atmosphere. And what you do is you just put a pinhole by the blind fitting so the air can leak out. And you're not actually producing hydrogen gas on demand, you're just allowing protons to leak out of the cell into the engine. The engine draws them in, and it changes the fundamentals of the engine. And that's all there is to it. It's not very complicated. I wish more people understood how it works. But I do have all of the information, including exactly how to prepare the water. That is an important key. And if you don't do it correctly, the cell won't function. I have all of that information. It's on my website, retali.com. If you go down, um, there's a link. So I hope that clarifies some things. I know it sounds a little weird to have a blind fitting with no air hole going into the engine, but that is the only way that a Joe cell will work. I hope that helps. Thank you guys.